Hi, I'm Taylor with Domo. Today I'm going to show you how to build a email user task in a workflow. What we're going to do is we're going to have our start shape set up. Um, I have it set as a message start. You can do a timer start as well. And we're going to add a user task here indicated by the person icon. In our user task, we're going to change our configuration type over to email. And here you'll notice that the right configuration panel changes uh, to have some settings for your email user task. You can search for recipients. I'll do myself for this. You can enter in a subject. And you can enter in an email body. The email body is cool because you can enter in variables from your workflow. So say that your start has some sort of message that you want to send to all of the users on your demo instance. We can set the message as a start parameter. And in the email, you can say hello. And then you can enter in your message here so that you don't have to type out the message uh, for each email user task. You can send it in as a variable. Um, as you can see with this, there's a lot of possibilities here. You can insert things like the current user. Say you're looping over a data set of users and you want to say, hello, insert user here. You can do that um, by getting the current username and entering the user variable right there. So that's great. Then in the email, um, you're likely going to want users to take action on whatever uh, the message is up here. So for the response options, what this does is it's gonna put buttons in the email um, and those buttons are gonna be each response option which you can then use to take action on later in the workflow. So say you wanna email everyone on your instance and you want them to choose their favorite color, red or blue. So let's do text, we'll put in the label and then the value which we'll use later in the workflow and you'll notice that the data type is now blocked and locked in as text because I chose text as the first uh, data type response option that's to make it so all of your response options data types are the same uh, so you don't have to have a bunch of different configurations because they store to an output mapping. So let's make an output mapping email response. We'll make the data type as text and then we can choose that in our output mapping for our email user task. You also have a reset button down here if you just want to start over. And let's enter in a title. And then after this user task, um, each time someone answers the email, uh, that will change the value of the email response. So if you do have it in a loop or something like that, you'll want to set it as the current response uh, so that you can use it uh, in your iteration. For now, we're just going to end. Okay, great. So let's save that. I'm going to go ahead and deploy it and show you what it looks like. We'll deploy, please choose your favorite color. We'll start that. And if we click on the instance, you'll notice that it's sitting here and waiting for a response. So email user tasks and form user tasks, they'll always wait until the person who it's been sent to has recorded a response. So in this, came, or in this case, it's sent me an email that you can see here. Hello, here's my message I sent in. Please choose your favorite color between red or blue. I'll choose blue. It's gonna redirect me to the instance to record my response. I can just hit done. It'll take me over to my overview. However, in the workflow, now if I refresh, 
you'll see that it's finished. You'll also see that blue has been recorded to the email response from the email user task. And there you have it. That is how you use an email user task. Uh, some pros and cons to email user tasks are uh, pro is that if you just need quick responses from users, it's a really easy way to do that. As you can see with entering in all of the response options, you give them the exact options that they can choose from. Really nice and easy. Cons, however, is it doesn't accept user input if you need more than just one response. Um, that is what a form user task is for, and we'll cover that in a later video. Alrighty, thanks so much for watching.